Carmel, Indiana is home to an unusual record. The city of 97,000 people north of Indianapolis boasts over 125 modern roundabouts, more than any other U.S. city, and they're proud of it. This number accounts for 3% of the country's 4,000 total roundabouts. But compared to other countries, the U.S. is not holding any records. France has the most roundabouts with over 30,000 constructed across the country. It is followed closely by the United Kingdom with 25,000 roundabouts. So how did one small Midwestern city become the roundabout capital of the U.S.? The reason can be credited to Mayor Jim Brainerd. During his graduate school trip to England, he observed the ease and safety of the country's numerous roundabouts. Drivers were yielding to traffic and to bikes and to pedestrians. No unsightly traffic signals and no long lines or congestion. It made me wonder why the U.S. had not built more roundabouts. When Brainerd was elected mayor of Carmel in 1996, he made it his mission to cover the city with roundabouts. But an ease in traffic congestion was not the only reason behind his campaign. In fact, the roundabout is the intersection of choice for many modernized countries because of its proven safety. Carmel, Indiana alone has seen a reduction in the number of injuries from car accidents by about 80% since the 1990s. So if roundabouts are increasing safety for drivers, why is America lagging behind? I hate them. They're the worst things ever. Just Americans like me hate it and don't think they're necessary. I think that it's taking a long time and I'm scared I'm gonna miss the exit I need and so I end up going maybe two or three times more than I need to. There are over 300,000 existing signalized intersections in the United States. According to the Federal Highway Administration, more than 50% of the combined total of fatal and injury crashes occur at or near these intersections. On average, over 10,000 people are killed each year in collisions at them. Yet, studies show that modern roundabouts reduce accidents by 38% and fatal crashes up to 90%. So why does the collision rate drastically drop? Well, the answer lies in the construction. A roundabout is a small one-way circular intersection built around a raised center island. Drivers must yield to circulating traffic as they enter and exit at their desired street. Because drivers are forced to slow down upon entry, the collision rate drops. They are no longer racing to beat the red light. Even if an accident occurs, injuries are less likely due to the lower speeds. Take note though, this is the definition specifically for what is called the modern roundabout. This is because the modern roundabout is often confused with the similar intersections known as traffic circles or rotaries. Unlike modern roundabouts, traffic circles are much larger in shape. Drivers enter traffic circles in a straight line at faster speeds, and they're not required to yield to oncoming traffic. In modern roundabouts, drivers navigate a gentle curve at a slower pace. Traffic circles often use stoplights or stop signs within the circular intersection. This is Columbus Circle in New York City. Built in 1905, it's considered to be the world's first traffic circle. Following its construction, large traffic circles began spreading around the United States. But because their layout enabled high-speed merging and weaving, they caused more vehicle collisions and they quickly fell out of favor. The big issue with these circles was safety. The fact that cars had to suddenly be stopped in the middle of it while everyone's coming in at speed, and that's scary. That's Gordon Meth, a civil engineer. And not all our cars perform as fast as others. Then they would get congested. Those were the reasons why circles fell out of fashion, and a lot of government agencies went around trying to get rid of circles. By the 1950s, development slowed to a halt worldwide. Fast forward to 1966. A city engineer named Frank Blackmore of the United Kingdom wanted to rectify the problems caused by traffic circles. So, he developed what is now known as the modern roundabout. Blackmore established the give way rule for his modern roundabouts, which required entering drivers to yield to circulating traffic. This created a much safer intersection than the original traffic circles. The idea quickly gained favor and the modern roundabout began spreading throughout parts of Europe. 
the changes Blackmore made were successful and over time, accident rates dropped drastically. But the trend was not catching on in the United States. Engineers weren't convinced that the improvements Blackmore enacted were safer for drivers, and Americans still had a largely unpopular opinion about them. So American engineer Leif Arston set out to change that. In 1984, Arston reached out to Blackmore for help. In 1941, Sir Winston Churchill asked America to join Britain in a struggle to protect democracy. We join you and together we triumphed. Now, 45 years later, I am calling upon you to help me with a difficult struggle in which we are both engaged. We are trying to bring the British style roundabout to the Western Hemisphere. The fighting is tough, the slogging is slow, and the resistance is stiff. In the spirit of Anglo-American cooperation, Will you join us and lend a hand? Blackmore quickly agreed to a meeting with Orston and traveled to the United States. Together, the two set out around the state of California, persuading traffic heads to begin building modern roundabouts. However, the public was not convinced. Surveys showed only 20% of drivers approved of their construction. Even if project proposals for roundabouts were approved, the two men were often met with protest, and the plans were quickly shut down. Finally, in 1990, Orson and Blackmore's hard work paid off, and the first two modern roundabouts were successfully constructed in a Las Vegas subdivision. The feat caught the attention of city planners. Other communities followed in their footsteps, and roundabouts slowly began popping up around the U.S. Although construction started later in the U.S., the timeline of events is not an exclusive explanation for the lack of roundabouts. In fact, there are a few theories that could account for the answer. First, the American detestation for roundabouts could derive from what is called the availability heuristic. This term describes the way people form an opinion on something based on the immediate thoughts or memories that are associated with it. The scene of Clark Griswold getting trapped while driving in a traffic circle and European vacation may come to mind. <laughs> it's amazing, I cannot get left. <laughs> There's Big Ben kids, Parliament. <laughs> or perhaps the time Homer Simpson drives hopelessly around the Lambeth Bridge roundabout before swerving out in a desperate attempt to escape the never-ending nightmare. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. I see an opening. No, it's not. Only to crash into the Queen of England herself. That's it. I'm acting the way America acts best, unilaterally. <laughs> When thinking about modern roundabouts, many Americans tend to envision traffic circles. This is an easy misconception because the two appear similar at first glance. Ever since the fallout of the original traffic circle that enabled high collision rates in the early 1900s, Americans were left with a bad taste in their mouths. So, the assumption that modern roundabouts will be just as dangerous is formed. Plus, American drivers might simply just be used to traffic lights. We're just used to intersections and traffic signals, historically. I've found that the public sometimes don't like four-way stops, where everyone has to stop and yield. They just don't like them because they just get, if there's a lot of traffic, they get kind of confused. I think you get the same effect in a roundabout. You know, the, the uncertainty level gets to people. There's something comforting, I think, to the um, red, yellow, green that tells you it's time to go or not go. They are comfortable with a binary system that controls their actions and makes decisions for them. Red light stop, green light go. Simple enough, right? In a sense, drivers care more about the illusion of safety created by stoplights. But when they are forced to rely on their own driving abilities, along with the actions of others, it causes a confusing and distressing experience. Another theory could be that Americans just don't know how to use a roundabout. There are certain parts of the country where they're starting to gain favor, but the reality is that people aren't used to it. You come up to this intersection, this circle, and it tells you to yield, but you're not totally sure how to use it, and you're not used to the concept of going around in a circle to find your exit. So it's a matter of just people getting comfortable with it and used to it. And that comes with critical mass. The more of them there are, the better. So I think that's what the main reluctance is. Many states don't even require teenagers to navigate one during the road skills driver's exam to obtain their licenses. 
even in the turn section on the Virginia State Driver's Evaluation, the roundabout portion reads only, if available. American drivers end up learning how to drive through a roundabout during their first real-world encounter with them. This can cause a stressful experience due to the lack of familiarity. Therefore, the disdain for the experience is established. Lastly, it comes down to awareness. Many Americans don't know how beneficial roundabouts are. Not only do roundabouts reduce vehicle collisions by 38%, they are also cheaper to construct, reduce congestion, and are better for the environment. Roundabouts save about $5,000 to $10,000 per year due to the reduced maintenance and electrical cost. They also improve traffic flow. Cars do not have to stop and wait for the light to change. One study of three locations in New Hampshire, New York, and Washington found an 89% average reduction in vehicle delays and a 56% average reduction in vehicle stops in areas where roundabouts replace intersections. Another study in Kansas across 11 intersections found similar results with a 65% reduction in delays and a 52% decrease in traffic stops. Because of the reduction in traffic delays and stops, roundabouts have a relatively non-existent carbon footprint. One study in Sweden found an average reduction in carbon emissions by 29% and a reduction in fuel consumption by 28%. Fortunately, it is proven that more and more Americans are coming around to accepting and using roundabouts. Studies show that once drivers learn how to use them, their attitude towards roundabouts drastically changes. Community surveys where roundabouts were built shows that only 30% of people approved of them before construction, but approval increased to about 50 to 70% after they were built. So, while modern roundabouts may not be widely popular in the U.S., Americans are slowly coming back around to the idea of them. How do you feel about driving in roundabouts? Do you prefer them over traditional intersections? Tell us in the comments below. While you're already here, be sure to like and subscribe, and go ahead and click on that notification bell to be the first to find out when we post new videos.